Hey GED students, it's GED question of the daytime and we've got a dreaded word problem. Let's check it out. It says the new sandbox at Carter Elementary School is nine feet by nine feet square and has a depth of one and a half feet. How much sand will be needed to fill the box? Okay guys, a lot of students just freeze up, don't know what to do with the word problem. A really, really, really good tip try to draw something. If there's something going on in real world, especially in these kind of like geometry style problems, really nice to draw it. So let me try to draw the sandbox. We got a nine foot by nine foot square. You might say, Kate, that's not a square. Oh, I'm distorting it because I know what a sandbox looks like. Okay, so it's nine foot by nine foot square. And then we also know its depth is depth is one and a half feet. Okay. Now, they asked me how much sand, so this is the question now, this is what I'm looking for, how much sand will be needed to fill the box? Okay, so a lot of clues here about what's going on. Um, one of the clues is that I'm, I'm trying to measure the sand. If I pour the sand into this, to this sandbox, it's going to fill it up. Uh, and that, this idea of filling a three-dimensional shape, so this is a three-dimensional sandbox and we're going to fill it, uh, that is the concept of volume. Volume is how we measure the filling of a three-dimensional space. It's the number of cubic units, so cubes basically, to fill a three-dimensional space. Well, anytime I have to do volume, we have a volume formula. We have volume formulas on the GED formula sheet. If you don't have the GED formula sheet, you should print it out. That thing is your best friend. You're going to have that when you go to take your test, but it's only going to help you if you know how to use it. So I'm going to go straight to my volume section, and there's volumes of lots of different shapes on there. You might be wondering, well, a sandbox is what kind of a shape? Well, it is a rectangular prism. Those kind of boxes with all straight lines there are rectangular prisms. So this is the volume of a rectangular prism. So I will first just write down the proper formula. It says V is equal to L w h and what they're saying here is to find the volume of a rectangular prism, multiply together the length, the width, and the height. That's what it means when letters are shoved together in math. We're going to multiply. So that's what I'll do. I'll plug in for my length, my width, and my height. Now you might say to me, Kate, which one of these numbers is the length? Which is the width? And which is the height? None of them are even labeled width, length, or height. I'm, and you might be freaking out. And what do I do? Well, great, great news, guys. The three dimensions of a rectangular solid are completely interchangeable. I don't care which one you call length, which one you call width, and which one you call height. It won't matter because we're just multiplying the numbers together anyway. We're going to get the same basic answer. So I'm supposed to multiply together 9 times 9 times 1 and a half. Now, a lot of you guys... Uh, would really struggle with this because you don't know how to input one and a half into your calculator. And if that's the case, that's you can either uh, learn how to input it into your calculator or you can use the decimal, decimal version of one and a half. I know if I have one and then I'm halfway past one, halfway past one, or halfway to two is another way to think of it, that's the same as 1.5. So feel free to trade out a decimal equivalent for any fraction you see that you don't like. So I'm just going to turn that one and a half to 1.5. Now it's easy to type into my calculator. By the way, I could have typed it in the other way, guys. It just would have taken a little more calculator work. So 9 times 9 times 1.5 gives me 121.5. Now, careful guys, don't just stop there. I really want to know 121.5 what? 121.5 what? Well, I just multiplied feet by feet by feet. I am now in cubic feet. Again, I'm a mathematician. I'm too lazy to write out the words cubic feet, so I'm going to use the official abbreviation, and that's to use the symbol for feet and put a little three on it. That is the abbreviation for cubic feet. Okay, so how much sand would be needed to fill the box? It'd be 121.5 cubic feet of sand. Great. If you have any questions about this or any other GED math topic, be sure to drop it in the comments and I'll do my best to answer it.